Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna demonstrate how to measure forearm pronation and supination with a goniometer, followed by manual muscle testing for forearm pronation and supination. So forearm pronation and supination when we're in anatomic position occur in the transverse plane, but we are going to measure it here. So that is the frontal plane. You can see by the movement of my thumb, that is frontal plane motion. Pronation and feel is either firm or hard and supination and feel is firm and both are 80 degrees. So zero to 80 degrees for pronation and zero to 80 degrees for supination is our established normal value. So patient position can be either standing or sitting. Obviously you're gonna choose sitting for someone who cannot stand or has a balance deficit or what have you. I like to do it standing if possible. So I'm gonna demonstrate it with the person standing. So standing, elbow flexed 90 degrees, forearm in neutral. And so we'll measure supination first. Okay, so when we measure supination, the fulcrum, let's talk about common compensations. So if someone doesn't have a lot of supination, they might compensate in a few different ways. They might adduct their shoulder, they might internally rotate their shoulder, and they might side bend toward ipsilateral trunk side bending to get a, you know their palm really up to the ceiling. If we see any of that, we're gonna try to eliminate that with some verbal and tactile cueing. All right, so palm up to the ceiling. Station, the fulcrum is gonna go just proximal to the ulnar styloid process. The stationary arm is parallel. You might wanna just stay in one place, like kind of right behind me. Um, is gonna be parallel to the anterior midline of the humerus. And the moving arm is going to go across the radius and the ulna. So you can have this down or you can have this up. A lot of people might find it easier to be up because it's closer and they can see if it's parallel. Um, I just have been doing it so long with it down that that's like my method. Um, you need to make sure that this is not, like right now it's just on ulna. That's wrong. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Right now it's just on radius. That's not right either. It needs to be equally across both and this needs to be parallel with that anterior midline. So I, there's my zero. I'm like losing my zero, there we go, okay. So she's at like 88 degrees for supination. For pronation, let me stand up, okay. If, if someone is missing pronation, there are a few compensations. They might abduct their shoulder and internally rotate their shoulder. So if we see that, one of the cues we can give is, keep this clipboard in by your side and don't let it fall to the floor because then they really can't, it makes it very hard for them to compensate with shoulder motion. Okay, so turn palm down. The fulcrum still goes just proximal to the owner's styloid process. What we oftentimes see with students is that they don't realize like with supination, the ulnar styloid process is over on this side and with pronation, it's over on this side. So the, where your fulcrum is gonna be is gonna switch, right? But it's always at the ulnar styloid process. It's proximal to it. Um, again, oh, sorry. Um, the moving arm goes directly across both bones. So it's not more on the radius or more on the ulna, it's equally across both. And this one, I need to find my zero. Um, is parallel to this line. And you can hold it down like I am. I'm getting like 78. Or you can hold it up. In fact, it's probably easier to hold it up because it's closer. You know what I mean? You can maybe get a better view if it's parallel. Okay, so now we're gonna do some MMT. So let's talk about MMT. So we always start with grade three. So we'll measure, what do we measure first? We just did supination first. So we'll measure MMT for supination. So we're gonna start fully pronated because MMT is movement against gravity. So the only portion of this motion that is supination against gravity is from full pronation to neutral, right? Because if you continue going, you're still supinating, but now it's gravity assist. So we only really care about the first half. So you could say to your patient, turn your palm all the way up, all the way up, as long as you know only the first half is what you were really looking for and you remember to bring them back to neutral. Or you could just say, turn so your thumb's facing up to the ceiling. So that's her grade three. Now I have to try to push her back to where she started. So I'm gonna try to turn your palm back down where you started and you're not gonna let me do it. Okay, we don't do this. 
we don't shake hands and say, don't let me turn your palm down because we're crossing so many joints. And that's uh, like the number one rule of MMT is not to cross the next joint. Um, if she has weakness at her wrist or her grip muscles, that could impede the grade I give her for forearm supination. So we don't do that. We also don't do this. So now you're thinking, well, I'm not crossing a joint. No, you're not crossing a joint, but also you don't have a good grasp. And all I end up doing is moving her skin around her radius and ulna. So here's how we do it. Let's start from the top. So turn palm down. I'm gonna have you turn your thumbs up to the ceiling. And I'm gonna try to turn you back down to where you came from. Don't let me do it. So I use my thenar and hypothenar eminence on the posterior aspect of her radius. And the other hand, thenar and hypothenar eminence on the anterior aspect of her ulna. And my elbows are out straight like this so that when I push, I'm in the same plane. And I'm just, just proximal to the wrist crease. Don't let me turn you palm down. Stay strong, stay strong. And there's the four and the five. If she can't do that, then I need to get her into this position and support the elbow. We just did supination, right? Okay, so I'm gonna have you turn your palm toward you. So there's supination in a gravity eliminated manner. So that's her two. And if she can't do that, then I'm palpating her supinator muscle. So I'm gonna be on the dorsal side, um, just proximal to like the head of the radius. And I'd have her turn your palm toward you. And if you can feel, let's start, start here. Turn your palm toward you. If she can't do it, but I can see or feel something happening in supinator, we give her a one, nothing, nothing is a zero. Now we're doing pronation. So we're gonna start in full supination and we're gonna pronate just the portion that's against gravity. So I'm gonna have you start here, turn thumb up to the ceiling and I'm gonna to try to turn you back to the way you were, palm up and you are not gonna let me do it. So this time I'm on the anterior radius and the posterior ulna. Don't let me turn you palm up, stay strong, stay strong. There's her four, five. And then we're gonna come up to our gravity eliminated what are we testing now? Pronation. So we start supinated and you're going to turn your palm away. So there's her two, right? Full pronation, gravity eliminated. And if she, I'm not seeing movement, then I'm going to palpate pronator teres, which comes across the proximal third of the anterior forearm. So put my fingers there, try to turn your palm away. And if she can't do it, but I can feel something or see something, it's a one. <coughs> and nothing is a zero. 